guys, it's Bree, and welcome to my channel, Just Breezy. We upload weekly content to discuss societal concerns, spread some joy, and connect to others, because like we say, life isn't always just breezy, but together, it can be a little easier. So guys, before social distancing was the norm and we were all quarantined, I had a chance to sit down with my friends, Kate and Liz. Now, Kate and Liz are mother and daughter, and they've made it their life's mission to spread awareness about diabetes. Kate is an 11-year-old girl living with type 1 diabetes, and it was really important for her to have her story and message told. And then I had the opportunity to sit down with her mom to get a parent's perspective. So I hope you guys enjoy, and please feel free to share this video as I know it will help others. Kate, thank you so much for coming over and chatting with us. You know, Walter wants to get in on too. I know a lot of people out there, they either have diabetes or at least they've heard of the word diabetes. But for anybody who doesn't know you, can you tell us a little bit about your own diabetes? Well, I'm a type one diabetic. Mm -hmm. So that means my pancreas does not work at all. Okay. So um, <laughs> I use the pump to produce my insulin. How old were you when you found out you had diabetes? Seven. Seven. And how did you know? Like, did something happen that mom and dad had uh, to bring you to the doctor? I, my parents were concerned because I was drinking water a lot, using the bathroom a lot. Mm -hmm. So they thought I had um, a bladder infection. Mm -hmm. So they took me to my doctor and they said, there's really nothing we can do about this. Go to the hospital. So I was in the hospital for about I'd say two days, I think. Okay. And then they figured out on the third day that I was a diabetic. I didn't know what to do. Me and my parents were scared, but the doctor told us that we all had to get through it like, together. Mm -hmm. So there was really nothing else that we could do except face the challenge together. So. I love that. That's such a great attitude, but that must have been scary, right? Being a yeah. kid, not knowing what's going on. Do you remember sort of what it was like to now you come home and you have diabetes and what did you have to do to kind of plan for that, for your new life well, with diabetes? like when I first came home, I was taking shots and it was kind of, and at night my parents might have to like give me a shot in the middle of the night and I would be up all night for the rest of the night. Mm. and. Then when I came into school with diabetes, my friends didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And so some of them were afraid and I told them not to be afraid because it's okay. Mm -hmm. And they kind of got more concerned and like helped me along the way. So some of my friends like know what to do. If my blood sugar is low and it's not reading, like I need the nurse to come to me mm -hmm. because I can't walk. Like I don't want to faint in the hallway mm -hmm. and then nobody notice. So, one time, I, it was like low, and then my teacher had an assistant, and they took me there. What does it feel like if your sugars are sort of high or low? What do you feel? If I'm high, I'm mm -hmm. really more energetic, because I really am energetic, but like I'm like maxed out. It's like you gave me a can of Red Bull, even though I'm already energetic. <laughs> Too much caffeine. But like if I'm low, I feel dizzy, and like I'm gonna faint, and I get all shaky. Mm -hmm. So. Like, if I feel shaky or dizzy, like, I'll tell my teacher straight away. So then if you have a high reading or a low reading, does that mean, like, if you go to the nurse, are you giving yourself insulin, or is that coming uh, through your pump, or how does that I'm work? If I'm high, mm -hmm. I'm giving myself insulin because I want my blood sugar to go down. Mm -hmm. But if I'm low, if I give myself insulin, I'll go even more low. Oh, okay. So then how do you bring it up to where you need it to be if you're low? I'll usually drink like an apple juice, have like some gummies, Okay. maybe cookies. And it instantly brings your blood sugar up? Well, not instantly. It may okay. take a couple minutes. So like whenever I have a juice and my blood sugar is low or cookie, mm -hmm. I'll wait like 10 to 15 minutes and then I'll test again. If I'm still low, eat something else, test again. If it's perfect, I go back to class. Okay. So, Kate, would you mind showing us what your pump looks like? I guess I could. Okay. Okay. Do you need help? Oh, I got it. You got it? Okay. Oh, okay. And how is that attached? Does it go in? Like, is there a little uh, uh, needle? There's a little, so there's just like a little blue catheter. Mm -hmm. The needle inserts it when I change it. So it will like click and then the needle inserts the catheter. And 
That's really it. And then how often do you have to, like, do you have to clean it or change the bandage that's I around it? I have to it? change this every three days. Every three days, okay. And does this limit you at all in the things that you do in life, having a pump there? No. no. So what are the things that you do? You told me your pump does not limit you. What are you doing right now as a middle schooler? Basketball, volleyball, cheerleading, and lacrosse. I think you're athletic, right? <laughs> you're doing all that. That's great though. Do you ever get down about it or do you just sort of have the attitude like, this is what I gotta do now? Sometimes I get down about it because yeah. like, of my blood's high and I'm at a birthday party, I can't eat cake or I can't eat mm. this or that. So it's like certain restrictions that annoy me. And now what about Kate's squad? Tell me a little about that. Cause I've seen on social media, <laughs> I've seen some of your friends with these really cool shirts. You're wearing it now. Tell me what that's about. So the Kate Squad is my, me and my friends and some of their parents who are all together. So we do a walk. Um, last year I was lucky enough to be a junior youth ambassador and I am again this year too. And what does that mean? It's the people who raise the most money. Oh, wow. So if you raise a lot of money, you have a chance to be a youth ambassador. Mm -hmm. And it was really exciting to hear that I was a youth ambassador because I'm kind of making other kids, you know, like, hey, look, if I can do this, you can do that too. Like, doesn't matter how much money you raise as long as, like, like I'm here, I can help you. Mm -hmm. So you should know that, like, we're all here for you. We all get it. We Like, we all have the same thing. Yeah. So they're That's kind of amazing. like family to me. So, I mean. That's amazing. That's so great to have that kind of outlook, you know. I know a lot of people have diabetes, but not everybody decides to kind of, you know, go that extra mile for people. So what really motivates you? Is it being there for people? Like what inspires you to do that? Um, it's like, you know, there are these people out here of diabetes, you know, that can't afford insulin mm -hmm. or anything. And just to know like doing these walks and also helping find a cure for people, it really is just like important to me because, you know, you know it's not every day where you have scientists trying to figure out a cure for people who live with an everyday thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, there's so many like amazing people out there who do this. And so the money's all going towards like that and they're saving people and they're like saving lives. So it's just great to know that like I'm saving lives, including like mine. Mm -hmm. So it's just really, really great to know that like, other people, I'm helping other people get through what I'm going through. Yeah, I'm sure. Even in the hardest situations. Girl, you're gonna go far in life, I'm telling you. <laughs> I mean it, like you have this great, um, not only do you have a great personality, but you just have a great outlook, you know? Because like I said, not everybody decides to do the things that you do, and I think that's amazing, I really do. Thank you for doing all that, <laughs> that's great. What's the one message you really wanna get across to people that they may not understand? Well, uh, just because we, our pancreas don't work, just because we can't break down sugar and carbs like you can, doesn't mean that we're any different from you. We know how to treat ourselves. We know how to live a basic life with diabetes. Mm -hmm. So really, I kind of wanted to dedicate most of my fighting to Aaron Judge and Taylor Swift because like, most of her songs made me feel like empowered because she's so like powerful and mm -hmm. she's such like a queen. I mean, music got me through most of it because like I love to sing. Mm -hmm. Like I'm downstairs karaoke <laughs> I don't care. And like me singing is just like a freedom for mm -hmm. me. It's like kind of getting away from all like this nonsense and all the bad stuff in life. What do you want to be when you grow up? A singer. Mm -hmm. I want to go on America's Got Talent. You can so do that. Ever get feeling everybody else is happy. Everybody else has friends. And they're better friends than yours. It's a very recent feeling. But it's running through my body and it roars. It roars. That was awesome. Oh, I love that. So Kate, thank you so much. Honestly, you have been such an awesome guest and I know that anybody that watches this, they're gonna be either inspired or educated and get something really wonderful out of the things you had to say. So thank you. You're welcome. Would it be okay if I gave you a hug?
Okay. Come here. Oh, you're the best. Honestly, you are the best. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So Liz, thank you for coming. It was so awesome to sit with Kate and get to know her and her perspective about having diabetes, but it's really important for people to know a parent's perspective. So how was it like for you and your husband when you first got Kate's diagnosis? It was a little overwhelming. It was very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. We um, didn't have a history of type 1 diabetes in the family, and she had actually been sick for about 10 to 14 days beforehand. Um, so we really didn't know what was going on. Mm. You know, we took her to the pediatrician thinking she had a bladder infection and wound up three days in Winthrop uh, ICU. So it was a little crazy, hairy, you know, um, but as a parent, you kind of just adjust to it. Mm -hmm. You know, you see Kate scared and not knowing what's going on. And we were scared not knowing what's going on, sure. but you kind of just roll with the punches mm -hmm. and, you know, I was Googling, you know, type oh. 1 diet. Well, I had no, <laughs> I, I didn't know. know what it was, yeah. you know. It's, yeah. it's something that a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions about. And what signs and symptoms was she showing? She, we thought she had a bladder infection. She was going to the bathroom very frequently. Mm -hmm. She was drinking a ton of water. Um, and I was doing the home remedies, cranberry juice, lots of water, right. um, trying to get her to sleep, bathe frequently, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, and then there were other things that happened daily that you just don't think about. You know, she would wake up in the middle of the night and we'd find her like in a closet. And we thought she was sleepwalking, but her, okay. it turns out her sugars were so high, she didn't know what she was doing. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. Like delirious? Like delirious. Type? You know, would have a full on conversation with you, but had mm -hmm. no recollection of it in the morning when mm -hmm. she woke up. Mm -hmm. So things like that. Um, That's scary. Yeah, it, it's very scary when you don't know the signs of something and it goes on for so long. Right. Um, because then there, there are other aspects of diabetes that come into play then. What was it like now to come home with a child that now has diabetes? It was scary. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had charts and insulin and needles and alcohol wipes and um, we didn't eat out, I think, for like the first six months. Mm. Um, you know, everything with diabetes, you get insulin based on the amount of carbohydrates you intake. Right. So everything needed to have a label on it. Um, I, didn't, I don't think I even cooked at home. Everything was, you know, out of a box from the grocery store that had the carbohydrate count on it for us just to make it a little easier. Right. Um, and it was, it was about two to three weeks, I'd say, mm -hmm. before like my husband and I really clicked into it and got into a routine. I mean, it wasn't easy, right. but we just kind of fell into the routine of, all right, this is what we do every day from now on. And how was Kate, like when coming home from the hospital, was she? Kate was wonderful. Honestly, um, she was so resilient. It really didn't bother her. Mm -hmm. um, I think the hardest part in the beginning was needles, but they never really bothered her that much to begin with. Okay. Um, so she really adjusted very well and again it was really more of an adjustment for my husband and i because we did everything for her at that right. point point. and then what was the biggest like adjustment for you as parents as far as like letting her go out with her friends or extracurricular activities did it affect that at all going to friends houses either my husband or myself would always be there mm -hmm. you know every, they would be outside playing and you have to call her in to check her blood sugar um, they would eat something and we'd have to stop and instead of her grabbing a cupcake and running downstairs and watching TV, it was okay, test your blood sugar, take insulin, do this. Right. I think it's still a little hard for her to realize that she has to do these extra steps and mm -hmm. she can't just run, fly by the seat of her pants like everybody else does. Right. right. So does that ever, and, and meeting her, I could tell she's just a positive kid, <laughs> but does she ever have a day where she's just like, this sucks, like, and it gets to her? In Every way. once in a while, mm -hmm. I think maybe three times in the past four years. Wow. Yeah, she, I mean, she really is great. It mm -hmm. really doesn't bother her that much. Okay. Um, you know, and now life is a little simpler for her. She wears a glucose monitor mm -hmm. where she doesn't have to test her blood 12 times a day. We can read it on our phones. Um, you know, so she can run out and play and not have to stop what she's doing. We can see what her blood sugars are doing, if they're going up, if they're trending down, right. you know, throw mm -hmm. her a juice box if, you know, we think she needs it for a little bit so she can play for the extra 15 minutes. Okay. 
um, and she wears an insulin pump now, so mm -hmm. we're not carrying needles everywhere, and she can just, it looks like a telephone, you know, she goes on her phone, does this, and it automatically gives her insulin. So it, it's gotten a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. And then what are your guys' concerns for her as she gets older, as far as, you know, uh, responsibility over this, or her insurance changing when she gets older? <sighs> Oh my goodness, that's a loaded question. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot, you know, I, I worry about when she goes to college, mm -hmm. um, you know, when she gets her first apartment, when she's, if she doesn't ever have her roommate, you know, it's, it's a scary thing. Um, I think I'll always monitor her on my phone. I have a, a, a friend whose daughter is in her 40s mm -hmm. and um, she still monitors her daughter on the phone. You know, so it's something that I think will always impact her. It'll always impact us. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as healthcare, you know, you don't know what's going to happen in the future. You see how it is nowadays. Right. Um, that's scary, but you have to look. You have to be hopeful that mm -hmm. you know things will change. Um, hopefully, it just gets better for her. Right. And then as a parent, what are your thoughts on what needs to change, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, no, not yeah. at all. Um, well, healthcare definitely needs to change. Um, there's a big misconception that um, the problem with type 1 diabetes is insulin, and insulin is a huge problem, the price of insulin. Um, but it's so many other factors than insulin. It's, you know, a glucose monitor, it's insulin pumps, it's medical supplies you need. Um, there's something called glucagon where mm -hmm. If a diabetic ever goes into a coma because their sugar is so low, they need that to revive them. It's almost like Narcan for diabetics. Okay. Um, we just tried to get one filled last week for Kate and it was $600. And it's obviously, you you pay whatever you have to pay because it's it's a medical necessity. Mm -hmm. But healthcare needs to speed up and, and figure out that these aren't, um, they're not options for diabetics. It, right. It's something that they need to survive. So hopefully the healthcare industry will catch on and, mm -hmm. and you know, make these more affordable for people that can't afford them. Right. Um, when diabetics are diagnosed um, as children, you know, Kate is under our healthcare plan and luckily we get a lot of coverage mm -hmm. with that plan. Um, other people aren't that lucky, but once they phase out of their healthcare plan, they graduate college and they go on um, to get their own jobs, they now have a pre-existing condition. And a lot of companies don't cover pre-existing conditions. So that's probably the number one thing that needs to change. What would you say like, to parents that are now just kind of getting the diagnosis or really overwhelmed? Like, Is there something that really helped you just in the beginning that you think other parents should know? What really helped us in the beginning was our, our uh, diabetes program at, at Winthrop. Um, I know not everybody in the world can go to Winthrop Hospital. Mm -hmm. They were phenomenal. It's really about finding a, a great um, team that's there to help you. Not only did we have like the endocrinologist at Winthrop, mm -hmm. they have a whole diabetes team. They have 24 hour a day um, call lines. They have kids programs, they have teen programs, they have um, parent nights, they have a social worker on call all the time. They do so many different things with the kids that have nothing to do with diabetes right. that really helped Kate adjust and find friends that are the same way, you know, that have the same illness mm -hmm. and teach them how to, you know, have fun but still stay on top of their disease right. without them even knowing what that they were learning in those programs. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's that's great. It's honestly wonderful. They've they've helped us so much. Mm -hmm. Um, and especially, like I said, coming from not knowing a thing about diabetes mm -hmm. to being thrown into this world, they were just absolutely wonderful. We want her to live her life, and these are things that she's going to have to deal with throughout her life. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of just staying on top of it, staying ahead of it, and taking it one day at a time. I just want to say thank you to Kate and to Liz for sitting down and sharing their story with me. I know there are so many others out there that will benefit from their experiences. Guys, as always, I so appreciate the support of you commenting, liking, and sharing of videos, and we will chat again soon.